and I am your other host, Taylor Togel. And uh, you guys may be wondering, uh, how, how does this get produced? Uh, well, we have the man, the myth, and the legend here with us. We want to introduce the one and only Mr. Brody O'Brien. Brody, you will have a seat. Um, we want to we wanna ask you, what have you been doing in this uh, quarantine, stay-at-home season? Well, just because it's been crazy a lot throughout the world lately, what I've been doing myself quarantine was I've been getting a lot of extra sleep. Yeah. You know, nice. I don't have to get up early for anything. And um, I've been watching a couple of movies. You know, I'm a big Marvel guy. Yeah. You know, right here. So. Now, are you like watching them all the way through, or? No, I'm just watching them randomly. Actually, what's your favorite one? Oh, um, I'm gonna have to say as of right now, it's Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Nice. It's hard to say anything except for Endgame. Exactly. Yeah. That feel good ending to it. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, everybody, please give it up for Mr. Brody O'Brien. All right. So, um, you know, every week we, uh, we want to give you guys some activities that you can do at home. And we're calling that hashtag HSC at home. Uh, so, you know, here's your disclaimer. Anytime that you, you post a video of what we're about to talk about or any of these HSC at home activities, make sure you add this hashtag in so we can watch it and enjoy it with you guys. Uh, we want to give you guys two of them this week, okay? The first one, I want to challenge you to think of a relative or maybe a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time um, and give them a call. Give them a FaceTime. Um, give, just give them a shout. Uh, ask how they're doing. Be intentional with that. Um, and you know, even invite them maybe to our live stream uh, this Sunday. Uh, the staff have been doing a tremendous job of broadcasting that on Facebook Live. Uh, and maybe you can share that with, with your family member um, or your friend. And then Rachel has the second one. Yeah, so our second challenge is going to be uh, pick your favorite restaurant uh, that's doing delivery or takeout right now and uh, help uh, order for your family. You try and make the call, uh, practice ordering over the phone for delivery. Uh, and then you can go pick up your family and uh, give your parents a night off from cooking. And maybe just make sure you check with your family and don't go get, uh, you know, a Brazilian steakhouse or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, make sure there's like a, a mutual agreement on where you're going for dinner, but uh, we challenge you guys to be the one that's making the call. I know phone calls are scary sometimes, uh, but this is a fun challenge for you guys. And I'm sure your parents would love to help you walk through the order, practice the order before you make the call. We believe in you guys and you can do it. All right, so now our, uh, our next one, another thing we have uh, lined up for you guys is that we have something special. We made a Human Squad TikTok account. And so there's no videos posted yet from it. Uh, you guys can expect we're gonna try and post our first one by tomorrow. Parents look out uh, for an email from uh, Matt about that tomorrow, sometime this week about it. Uh, but uh, before we post our first video, uh, I thought I'd give Taylor a TikTok dance lesson uh, before we post our first video. So Taylor has seen this video once. But I have never TikTok. And he has no knowledge of TikTok. So we're going to see how this goes. Do you want to stand up to do this? Yeah. So we're just going to go through a quick practice of the dance. We don't have to go all out. Okay. We're just going to do a slow uh, tutorial of it. So the song is Blinding Light. Awesome. Um, and so it's got, it's got this kind of jazzercise feel to it. And so you're going to be kind of like jumping up and down, but one of your feet is going to be like this. So, so like I'm stopping them. Yeah, down. sure. Okay. So, so, with my hands. Yeah. so the first thing you're going to do, it's hard because there's new music right now, but you heard the song once, so I'm sure you're a pro. Uh, the first thing, so we're going to be dancing. <laughs> and the first thing, maybe we'll take it step by step. The first thing we're going to do while we're bouncing is we're going to dab. Okay. And then can do that. you're going to be, your feet, <laughs> while you're bouncing, you're going to have your foot if we want to tone it down, we can have just one of our feet is going to be going up in front. It's going to be your wow. left one. While you're down. Yeah, you're going to go bam. Okay. So you're going to go bam. So we're, so we're stopping. And so then you're going to go boom. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> and then while you're bouncing, and then you're going to go arms up, arms up, <laughs> swim, <laughs> swim. Same thing with the feet on that side. Yeah, so okay. just keep going. And then at the end, to keep social distancing and seeing, you're just going to jump. Okay. And out, that's just it. out of way. Just out in the way. Okay. So be on the lookout for that first video being posted awesome. sometime this week. It's gonna be 
It's going to be awesome. It's going to be our best try. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we just want to bring some humor and connection to you guys while we can't see you in person. So that concludes. Yeah, we need, we need to take a break. Yeah. That concludes that announcement. Well, as <laughs> my brother, I'm going to talk about the recap for the middle schoolers. Once again, I'm going to say what I've been saying at the top of the hour every week is that middle schoolers, if you haven't watched, sorry, if you haven't watched this week's video that was posted on Sunday, go back and watch it. It's going to be way more in depth than what I'm going to be saying. I'm just going to be hitting the highlight reel. The video is not that long; it's 10 minutes tops. Uh, but I suggest you go back and watch it on our YouTube channel, uh, just so you're like caught up on what I'm going to be saying. So. Finally, we are done talking about sex, <laughs> and now we are moved on to a new series that is kind of uh, laying, it's going to be like prepping our hearts and getting our mindsets uh, in the right place for Easter. And so, this is week one of this new series. For middle schoolers, it's called Undefeated, and this week's just kind of laying the foundation for the series. It's not going super in-depth into the text or the stories, it's just going to be laying the primer. And so... The series is called Undefeated, and I think I can say that like we all like being champs of something. Um, there's a lot of student athletes in here that have won championships or set uh, like records for their schools and things like that. Um, I personally am the champ of spotting dogs out in public. Check my Instagram. I'm there. I, I have the sources to back that up. Um, but ultimately, um, sometimes even champs get defeated. And uh, ultimately, being defeated makes you separated from something that you wanted. Maybe uh, you're playing on a team and losing separates you from a win, or maybe you didn't make a team that you wanted to play on. Maybe you failed a test that you studied for that separates you from the A that you wanted. Uh, or maybe you feel like you've made choices uh, in your life that makes you feel like you're defeated in God's eyes. And that can make you feel like you're disconnected and separated from that relationship that you want from, uh, with God. And so this series, like I said, is prepping our hearts, putting us in the right mindset, like gearing us, turning our hearts towards this time that we're celebrating Easter. Um, and so this series is supposed to remind us that uh, like because of the sacrifice that Jesus made, we are no longer separated from God. And so throughout the Bible, God makes ways to be close to his people. In the Old Testament, uh, there was tabernacles, which is just kind of a fancy word for tent. And in the New Testament, there were temples where people could go to worship God. And both of these things, both the tabernacle and the temple, they had these sacred dwelling places for God to dwell in, and in each of them, they had a place that they were sectioned off for God to dwell in, and it's usually separated by a curtain, because God can't be in the presence of sin, and so, like, an everyday sinner couldn't go into this, like, holy of holies place uh, to dwell with God, because we were separated from Him. And so, even in Bible times, people were sinning, just like you and me, and that caused separation from God, and that's why there was that curtain in the tabernacle and the temple. Um, and so, flash forward to this Easter story that we're going to be talking about. God sent Jesus to live among man and eventually die at the age of 33. But everything about the story of Jesus' death is out of the ordinary and it's straight miraculous. And so, Jesus died on the cross with the weight of the world's sin on his shoulders, and he took the payment that like we deserved, uh, that we could have a relationship with God. So, and he did that because he loved, because of how much he loves us. And so, flash, flashing back uh, to remember those tabernacles and temples that I mentioned about God having a special dwelling place separated by that curtain, right? So, uh, back when uh, Jesus' death was being like, recorded by the disciples and stuff like that, in Matthew 27, Matthew reported that when Jesus died, uh, the temple in the curtain, the, the curtain in the temple uh, was torn in half when Jesus died. And so Jesus ended our separation from God when he died, just like that curtain being torn. 
And so that's what we celebrate at Easter. We celebrate the end of that separation from God because of what Jesus did for us. Um, because, because of Jesus, separation is defeated and the curtain was torn and our connection with God, with God was restored, which is so awesome. And so it's because of God's love for us that he created a way to uh, be, for us to be close to him. Um, like, that's the whole reason. It's like, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? It's like, because God wanted there to be a way for us to be close with him. And so, it's never too late. I mean, you think that, like, you've made, like I said before, you've made uh, mistakes in your life that you feel like that makes you separated from God. But, like, Jesus loves you so much that, like, he's, like, he died on the cross to make a way for you to be close to God no matter what mistakes you've made in your life. And so I want to encourage you guys to tell you that it's never too late to ask God for forgiveness for maybe things that you feel like are separating yourself from him. And that's my recap. Uh, hi, schoolers. I'm going to be talking to you guys for a second. Um, I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you're, uh, you're finding ways to stay busy uh, at home. If you're anything like me, that probably means you've watched a lot of TV shows and movies. Um, I have watched probably more TV shows and movies in the last couple of weeks than any couple week period in my life. Um, and I think the favorite one that I've watched uh, over that span is Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, now, I've seen it before, but it's just so good that even this time around, it was just as good as the first. Um, I thought that the, the creativity of the new Peter Parker is just really good. And even the creativity of the villain, Mysterio. He's a new type of villain that we haven't seen in many movies, right? It was just refreshing and it was good. And in the end, uh, you know the story, Spider-Man defeats him, right? Or so we think. There was a little teaser at the end. But as far as we know, he defeated Mysterio, right? And, and we all kind of love those, those types of movies. We love uh, the movies where, where the hero defeats the villain, right? I'm thinking of all the Avengers movies. I'm thinking of... Uh, even X-Men movies, I'm thinking of Batman. All, all of these movies have the storyline of, of good uh, defeating bad. There's just something about a good hero story uh, that we love, right? Uh, so as, we're, as we're, we're coming up on Easter, we're asking a question. And the, and the question is, uh, why is Easter uh, such a big deal? Uh, why, why should I give special attention to Easter um, you know, a lot of good things happen during Easter time. Uh, families kind of tend to come together, most families. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, you'll see tons of Reese's uh, peanut butter eggs, right? And we all love those. Uh, it's springtime, uh, and that means people are out and about and, and, and finally being active again after winter. Uh, but none of those things really are the reason why Easter is a big deal. Uh, the real reason is this. Easter reminds us of the ultimate story of good overcoming bad. Easter reminds us of the ultimate story of overcoming bad. And here's what I mean. I'm going to get real with you guys for a second. We live in a world that is full of, of pain and of suffering and of decay and of death. Uh, and it doesn't take long to see it, and it, it affects all of us. When you look at things like the Nashville tornado a couple of weeks uh, we're in the middle of a coronavirus uh, pandemic, right? Um, but even on a more personal note, I mean, we've all lost uh, maybe a pet that we loved, it, or maybe even a family member that we were close to. Um, and those are, those are difficult things to, to go through, and they cause hurt, and they cause pain. Uh, and, and you could say that they, they sting, right? They just sting to the, the fullest degree. And I think that that is actually exactly why Easter is such a big deal. Those realities are exactly why Easter is such a big deal. And I want to show you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 to 57 say this. It says, Where, O death, is your victory? And where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so at Easter time, we remember two things. One, Rachel just mentioned that Jesus died on the cross, and he didn't do it for the people just back then or, or certain groups of people. He did it for us, too. He did it for everyone. And the second thing that we remember is that Jesus rose from the dead three days later. And not only that, but he's still alive. Jesus, our Savior, is alive right now, 
at this very moment. And what Jesus did was remove, through, through that death, through that resurrection, he removed that sting and he replaced it with victory. He removed that sting and he replaced it with hope through his resurrection. And so my only point tonight that I, I want to leave you guys with is this. By believing in Jesus, we participate in his death and in his resurrection. It's a simple but powerful truth. By believing in Jesus, we participate in that death and in that resurrection. And that is what we remember uh, at Easter time and it's why we celebrate during Easter time. Because we might die here on this earth, but we can live forever for faith is in Jesus. And that's why Easter is such a big deal. Good has overcome evil for once and for all. Jesus has provided us with victory and he's provided us with hope. And through that, through that, we have a promise that one day we're going to be with him again. And as Romans 8 says, there's nothing that's going to stop it. Not even death. Not even the sting of death. Um, I, I believe that. Uh, it, it, Rachel believes that. Matt believes that. We believe that. And I want to encourage you guys to believe it as well. And I want to encourage you uh, to, to experience that hope and, and that joy that, that those realities bring. It is the ultimate story of good overcoming evil uh, that we've ever heard. And so with that being said, um, that is officially our recap time. Um, we do want to uh, pray over you guys. Um, so if you have a prayer request uh, and, you're, and you're on the live stream right now, please feel free to, to comment in the comment section. Um, and we'll give that just a, just a second to um, get going. Matt, there's not already any comments, are there? Okay. I realized I forgot to say that at the top of the thing. Oh, but it's yeah. fine. Or in perfect really? people, so. Um, well, if there, is there anything in the comment section now? Or, all right. Well, with that being said, um, Rachel, if you want to go ahead and start our prayer, um, I'll finish this off. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Jesus, we thank you so much for uh, your family and that we can just come together even when we're apart and still learn truth together and be reminded of uh, important truths, Lord, like uh, Taylor was talking about, about how the victory has already been won, Lord, through you, uh, and that we can have a relationship with you, that we are no longer separated, Lord, and we, we thank you for that. Uh, God, I just want to pray for the families of Hewlin Street right now as they're going on week two or three, maybe even four, of this uh, time of isolation and quarantine with their family, Lord. Uh, that you just uh, bring them peace, maybe, uh, as they are uh, in close proximity, Lord, just ease tensions, ease the anxiety, Lord, uh, and just let these families know uh, that you care about their anxieties, Lord, you care about uh, what they care about, Lord, and your heart hurts for theirs, Lord. Uh, and I just pray for provision uh, for these families as many are going through really uncertain times, financially or with their jobs, Lord, I just pray that you make a way to provide and you just bring this community together to provide for one another in ways that we've never seen before, Lord. And before I, want to, before I pray, I want to ask one more time, any comments at this point on the live stream? Any prayer requests? Okay, I'll pray. Um, God, I want, to, I want to lift up our, um, our, our citywide leadership. Um, God, I want to pray for, for our mayors and our council members and, and anyone that has uh, a say in, in the, the, the forward direction that we're going. Um, God, I pray that you give them wisdom uh, in, in knowing how to lead us uh, in this time. Um, God, I want to pray for, for our state and, and nationwide leaders as well. Um, the same thing, God, that you give them the wisdom in knowing how, how, to, um, how to navigate these, these unprecedented waters. Uh, and God, God, lastly, I want to pray for our church leadership, um, for our pastors, and those making decisions for us individually. Um, God, I, I want to thank you for the leadership that they've already demonstrated, um, and I'm proud to call them our pastors. Um, God, I, I pray that, um, that you would just continue to give them that wisdom, continue to, to lead them so that they can lead us, um, and that we can ultimately honor you, uh, glorify you in this time, in this season. Uh, and not be discouraged by it, but embrace it um, and see the good that there is to be seen. Uh, God, we love you and, uh, and praise you for all that you are. Uh, and I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
We got one prayer request that came in yeah. from Gracie Cunningham. Gracie. She asked for us to pray to be able to focus and stay driven to do homework. Awesome. Rachel, you want to pray for that? Yeah, of course. Uh, Lord, I want to pray for uh, Gracie and uh, all of the students at home right now that are navigating uh, this hard time of learning how to be an online student when they didn't ask for it, Lord. Uh, and I just pray that you uh, just stir their motivation to finish the semester strong, Lord, uh, and that you just uh, give them like a conviction for time management, uh, even though it's so easy to just uh, spend eight hours a day on Netflix, Lord, that you just remind them that they're still in school, which is just such a hard truth to remember sometimes, Lord. Uh, but I just pray for the students, for Gracie, um, that they may just, uh, yeah, feel motivated to finish their semester, finish their school, uh, and you just give them uh, friends and family uh, around them to like encourage them in their studies, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for tuning in on the live stream. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, be on the lookout for that TikTok video. It's coming at you. We'll see you next time. See you guys.